So you had one person mm -hmm. that believed in the vision mm -hmm. to a point where he was willing to invest mm -hmm. in the vision. And Girl CL's like, let's just make sure that we take note of this. Sometimes we're looking for 50 people to believe in us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're looking for thousands of people on Instagram to believe in our vision. But this just goes to show that you just need one person just to one. put that money yeah. where their mouth is and show you that they really believe you. It's the Girl CEO Show. Run it up. Always on the grind, you already know what's up Everything from dating in the life in the business Covering it all like a boss, come and get this It's the Girl CEO Show, yeah Hey Girl CEOs, welcome to the Girl CEO Podcast The playground for female entrepreneurs I'm here with my girls today, Barry Hey girl and Malia. Hey, girl. Thank you all for joining me today. I've been looking forward to this interview. You guys are killing it in a field that you don't see that many black women in. And we are here live at Rolls Forever. And these <laughs> girls are scooping, swooping, and rolling. And rolling. <laughs> <laughs> all the ice cream. I'm here. So let's jump into this interview. The first thing I just want to say is congratulations. Thank you. The establishment is so beautiful. Thank you. And Girl Seals, get ready because this interview is going to be a ton of fun. We're going to get very live and interactive with this thing. But how does it feel to own your own Roll Forever ice cream shop and really be taking your city by storm? I mean, it feels freeing. Um, we have a lot of autonomy um, in just doing what we want, being creative, um, just being able to express ourselves through ice cream and being able to give back to our community where we were born and raised in. I love it. I love it. And one of the things that I've been really paying attention to is you guys are super young. And I love that you're so young, but so dedicated to your business. What would you say to people who are in their 20s who are feeling like, you know, is it too early for me to jump out there and create my success story? I feel like it's never too early. Uh, start now. Literally, the sky is the limit. Uh, we always tell ourselves, we tell others to don't limit themselves. Um, because literally, whatever you want to do, you can accomplish it. Yeah. How old were you guys when you started this business? So I was 23. And I was 22. Yeah. And how so. long ago did you start it? So I'm now 26. And I'm 28. I lied. I'm 27. Wow. <laughs> I don't even know my age. What is going on? It's okay, I was girl. like, hold on, wait, she's two years ago? It, it's okay, I'm 21. I feel like I'm at the point now where it's like, I just know I'm getting closer to 30. Yeah. So, so I mean, you got to push, you gotta push it back yeah. a little bit. It's okay, girl. You know, I'm 21, so it's, it's totally... And you look good. It's so. totally look amazing. Fine. It's totally fine. I'm 21. I've been 21 for probably... We won't even go there, but I've been 21 for a long time. <laughs> Anywho, getting started, what was it like when you started your business? It was challenging. Um, so we started off as a food truck, and then we expand. We started off as a food truck in 2018. Okay. We expanded to a store um, in 2020, so... Just starting, trying to get funding for a food truck, um, getting people to take us seriously. Okay. All of that was a challenge. So do you think that the ice cream business is still a very lucrative business? I definitely think so. And like we are super unique. Um, so we're not sure just traditional scoop ice cream. You come in here, you get an experience, um, and just look at the ambiance. Like you come in and you feel good when you step into the store. Um, so I definitely think it's still lucrative. I think that there's a lot of opportunity um, in this niche, um, and there's a lot of growth, um, so most definitely. How was it getting started when you were telling people, hey, you know, we're starting this ice cream business. Um, what type of feedback were you getting? We, we hear so many stories of people saying, you know, when I started my business, my friends didn't believe in me. People mm -hmm. laughed at the idea. They're like, oh, this is old. It's too late. Mm -hmm. You know, this market is just so saturated. Um, what type of feedback were you all getting and how did you overcome those things? I think we got a lot of support. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, through our families and like our friends and like even the community at the time, there was not really a lot of rolled ice cream places in the area at okay. first. Um, so just the craze and it was really trending on Instagram, on okay. social media. So everybody was super locked into rolled ice cream, the process, the experience and everything like that. So we got a lot of support and I think that that's what fueled us a lot. Um, yeah. Just jumping out on faith and like actually doing this thing. And people were also surprised that two 22 and 23 year olds were starting a food truck 
Yeah. We had just graduated from college. Mm-hmm. We worked in our corporate jobs for a year before we did this. So people were shocked. So did you use your income from your corporate jobs to start this business? Most definitely. Yep. You know, we we are in the age of social media where everybody is saying, quit your job, fire Mm -hmm. your boss, you know, start this business, just walk out and keep on going and don't Mm -hmm. look back. But I think that, you know, for me, I'm always telling my girl CEOs that you want to leverage Mm -hmm. that income from your job to invest in your business, to take that business to the next level. And I just always say, take your time, you know, make sure that you're financially um, at a place where you're ready to walk away from your job to build that business. So you all made a decision that you were gonna quit your jobs and you had saved up enough money from your job to Mm -hmm. go ahead and take that leap and say, hey, like we're gonna invest this in our business Uh and we're gonna launch this business. What made you feel like you knew that it was time to quit the job and take that leap? So we told ourselves that we were going to quit in April. No, we quit in May, right? March. It was March. So you all quit at the same time. We quit Mm -hmm. at the same time. Okay. Quit at the same time. And we fasted for 40 days before we quit our job. Come on fast. (laughs) (laughs) And I kid you not, in April, we were completely booked. So we took that as a sign that God was telling us this is what we needed to do and this is the path that we needed to go on. Wow. Were you nervous? Were you afraid? Oh, I was <laughs> nervous. Okay. And I'm super big on like security net, making sure like I know where everything is coming from. And that was a huge risk yeah. um, for me to one, quit my corporate job that I went to school for um, and then go out on a limb and do this entrepreneurial journey. Um, but yeah, I definitely was scared. And what fields were you all working in? when you started this business? Um, so my major was international business. I was working um, at a healthcare company in HR. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I was in clinical research. Yeah. Wow. And you were like, okay, so we're going to sit down, we're going to schedule this date, and we're taking this leap. Yep. Mm-hmm. How did your parents feel about that? They were, they were supportive. super supportive. So my parents actually own a food truck. Okay, so, awesome. Okay. So, so that's you kinda, had the mentorship. We did, yeah. Mm-hmm. So they kind of gave us the blueprint of how the food truck industry worked. So we had a mentor and... They helped us succeed. Mm-hmm. So everyone was very on board, yeah. on board with our So process. how important is mentorship to you now knowing what you know? Extremely important. I don't think that we would be where we are today without, without that mentors. Yep. Most definitely. You know, one of the things that I always say is that when I started my business, initially I spent so much money on, you know, shopping and vacations. When I first started making money, it's like your first year of business. You Mm -hmm. just go crazy Mm -hmm. a little bit, you know. And now I look back and I say, I would have taken that money and I would have invested that money into mentorship, into coaching, um, into things of that nature. What would you say to people who are out there who are looking to get to that next level, who are kind of on the fence Mm -hmm. when it comes to investing um, and putting some money into mentorship and guidance. I definitely say it would be beneficial, um, but all it, it depends on like your journey and what it looks like for you, um, because everybody's route is completely different. Um, but definitely um, investing in mentorships, I think that that can push the needle forward a lot of steps, um, and you could pretty much jump some hurdles without having to like clash into them if you do that as well, because I think that helped us a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and being so young and taking that leap, Mm -hmm. it just goes to show that anything is possible. So is it super expensive to start a food truck or ice cream business for those who are watching out there they may be considering it? I don't think a food truck is expensive to start a food truck, but when we talk about an actual store, yeah, so overhead is expensive yeah. for sure. Overhead is expensive for sure. Food truck to a mm-hmm. store. Yeah, and what I will also just I want to stress this point, listeners, pay attention to this. You have to start your business in in different steps. So the goal may be to open a store, mm-hmm. but you may start with the food truck. Yeah, right? until the food truck can position you to open the store. Mm-hmm. And that's what you're talking and about crazy, leverage. Our, our goal was never to open a store. Mm-hmm. Like, Tell me about that. So <laughs> we had started with the food truck and honestly, I still wanted to go to dental school. Um, but the food truck was, it was taking off. We were growing a passion. Was for, it ice cream? Was what ice cream? The, the food, food truck. Yeah, the food yes, truck was ice cream. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, because you know I'm from D.C. Mm-hmm. So in D.C., you say food truck, we think it, like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, th- we think it like hamburgers, french fries. So that that can all go on a food truck. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, ours was, we did road ice cream on a food truck. Okay. Um, 
And I still wanted to go to dental school. So I just, this was kind of a, a hobby in a sense for us. Okay. We just wanted to see where it went. And I think, you know, growing the business, we grew a passion and God revealed purpose through the business as well. Yeah. So through that, just steps just started to align. And that's kind of how the story came about. How mm -hmm. important is it to start small versus trying to jump right into the bigger vision? I think it's very important to start, start small. Um, I think that you learn a lot on the process. Um, oftentimes, us as humans, like we try to bite off too much and try to get to the end goal super, super quick so that you can be at this glorious moment. But I think starting small also builds character and it just makes the journey even more worthwhile. Yeah. yeah. What are some of the hardest things that you all have been through so far? Um, I would say just getting a lot of no's, being shut down um, on our journey. Um, it took a long time to get this. Um, so where we're sitting today, this took a lot of hard work, um, a lot of no's, a lot of closed doors, a lot of you're too young. Um, it, so it was very difficult. Um, but I mean, we prevailed. Yeah. So, so y'all did get a lot of you too, you're too young. Yeah. Oh, so many. Too young. Tell me a you're too young story. <laughs> so someone had actually told us that they didn't think our business or we were mature enough. Mm -hmm. Our business, well, I think we were in like, business for two years yeah. at that point, mm -hmm. and they were like, are you sure y'all really want to do this? Like, are y'all really going to want to roll ice cream? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, like we're showing you the numbers. We're showing you that we have all of this plan that we can do it. So this is even with the income statement. This is yes. even with the income. So the people were still out here playing with y'all with the income statement. Still playing. And, 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 that's, and that's the thing. <laughs> I think that's the thing that was like really like baffling, baffling yeah. was that we had the numbers on paper. Um, but they still didn't take us serious. So it's kind of like, how do we break down this barrier in order for people to really take us serious the way that we take our business serious? Like this is our livelihood. So it's like, you know, we, we're after this, like we're some go-getters. And even with the P&L sheets, they looking at it like, okay, like, huh. A joke. Yeah. How did you break those barriers? We just continued to- Kept trying? Yeah, we kept knocking on doors. The income kept going up. Kept going up. <laughs> Still Events, going up. Events, people kept booking us. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, because sometimes when you're building something and you get that rejection, it can be very hurtful. It can be very discouraging. And sometimes it'll even cause you to pivot mm -hmm. on your way um, to your goal. Just by hearing that negative feedback, you'll feel like maybe I need to do something. And that's sometimes one of the biggest things that we can do, allowing negative feedback to cause us to pivot and go in a different direction on our journey versus stay in the course so how do you feel now that you all did not allow that to distract you and you stayed the course what are some of the things and some of the opportunities that have been opening for you all recently so i think now um people are actually starting to you know recognize our brand people are recognizing us as a ice cream brand so when people want ice cream they won't road forever we're becoming a favorite ice cream yeah. um, people want to come to road forever and experience road forever and because of that I feel like things are starting to align mm -hmm. um, a lot of things that we never thought that we wanted to do or happen I mean, we're on a we're talking to you right yeah. now I bought your book what five six years ago wow. never thought I would be on a podcast with you so oh, look at just God. look at God <laughs> so just you know doors are doors are opening um our vision I feel like it's more clear for our business um there are several things that we want to do now that we had never thought of in the beginning yeah what are those things should we tell them um, <laughs> <laughs> y'all want to keep it a secret yeah. we, 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 no, give me like one or two one thing that you want to do that's on your dream board as a business. One thing that we want to do. Um, I think we want to continue to elevate our brand, continue to get out there, continue to like bring awareness to our brand. So I think we're still trying to like elevate and we're still trying to get ourselves out there because there's still so many people that don't know what rolled ice cream is. Yeah. Um, so many people who've never experienced rolled ice cream or haven't even heard of rolled ice cream. So I think just getting the awareness out there about our product and the experience, we want to continue to elevate that. I love that. You me so <laughs> Spill the beans. So I was going to say, I think that we are going to, we're trying to build the outreach part of Road Forever as well. Yeah. I think that we've noticed that we empower a lot of girls who look like us. A lot of girls coming here, they see us and they're like, oh, I want to open up a road ice cream business. I want to yeah. do this. I want to do that. So we actually want to create 
something that entitles that as well. So we want to do a nonprofit up under Road yeah. Forever as well. And, and one of the things I was going to ask you all is, is this a franchise? No. no. Okay. It's not. Have you all, all ever thought about going in that direction? It's been on the table before. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Because, you know, when you were talking about black women coming in and seeing that this is a black owned business mm -hmm. and saying like, oh my gosh, like I want to open this kind of business. I think that would be a great avenue yeah. for you all to for go sure. in. Yeah. So let's talk about the relationship okay. because, you know, there is this myth that you guys are clearly busting, mm -hmm. that you know friends can't do business together, mm -hmm. you shouldn't do business with your friends. Mm -hmm. Let's start with how you all met and became friends. Gotcha, so it goes back a long time ago. Um, <laughs> I was eight, she was seven, we played Little League basketball. Oh, y'all went back back. Yeah, we yeah back, back back. back. <laughs> <laughs> so we got, we're 20 years Like literally same. shooting in the gym together. Um, so yeah, we started off super, super young. Um, we played basketball together. Our families just became really close friends over that time period, and we've never left each other's side then, um, since then. Um, we went to high school together, um, went to college together for a little stint of time, um, and just always kept in connection. Um, with each other and we've always been by each other's side. Now, what would you say has been the thing that has kept the relationship strong through ups and downs in business? <laughs> She's laughing because we're going to say the same thing. We our values and morals. <laughs> like, yeah. literally. Our values and morals, I think that's what keeps our relationship so strong and so tight-knit. Yeah. Um, and we also have great communication. Like, mm -hmm. we communicate with each other. We give each other our space. Um, we've learned each other yep. from the inside out, I feel like. Yeah. Um, it's like a marriage. It, it really is. It is a marriage. And we, so always we always say that. Talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> We're always like, uh, does God just want us to be together? Yeah. Like, what is it? <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, so what are y'all, how have you all handled the controversy and the ups and downs and the moments where you all are like irritated with one another because people don't know like that happens in friendships yeah. and it also happens in business relationships how have you managed to keep the ego out of the business and continue to build a relationship and the business at the same time hmm that's a great question yeah because um, we never just really like bumped heads or like ran into any like just major major problems like knock on wood um don't know what god has in store for us later <laughs> yeah. but um i think that we're so different but yet we're such alike that yeah. i think it really balances our personalities out in a sense and i think um, we also respect each other's opinions as well yeah. so with her seeing that we're so different yet so similar, mm -hmm. you know, when she comes to me with something and I may not agree, I'm like, oh, but I didn't think about that. Like yeah. my, she shifted my perspective yep. in a sense. Yeah. So I think that helps us. Yeah, we definitely, I think, like she, like we were just saying, like we're different, but we're similar in so many different, in so many ways. And I think that kind of is the glue um, for both of us. Um, and we, like we said, we've been together for 20 years, like we've been friends for 20 years at this point. So we've literally grown up from a child to an adult yeah. um, together. So we're basically like blood without being blood. Um, and she's like family. So she is family. So it's just like one of those things where like we've just been on this journey together and we've learned, like we've been through so many different ups and downs, so yeah. many different chapters of our lives. So like, I think that we have just really cultivated that as one whole thing and we just move well together. Yeah. And aside from the, the business aspect as well, we also check in on each other. So like we're actually really best friends. Yes. Yeah, before yeah. we meet, we're always asking like, how are you mentally? Like, what are your personal goals for the week aside from your business goals this week? So just actually like being there, checking in for one another. Yeah, so many people talk about the bad side mm -hmm. of having a business partner. Mm -hmm. um, and ego can get in the way for so many people. And they're like, I don't want anyone else in this business with me. Um, I want to do this by myself. Mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with people. I, I've heard the saying like alpha women don't run in packs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the benefits of having uh, a business partner? And, and I want to throw one out there that really stood out to me with your stories mm -hmm. is the fact that you had two incomes mm -hmm. coming in that could come together and invest in this business versus one person trying to figure it all out mm -hmm. all by themselves. Yeah. 
I would say partnership for sure is the biggest thing. Uh, just what we were talking about with perspectives, like, you know, if I'm thinking of something and my logic may not be correct, she'll step in and she'll say, well, maybe we should do it from this angle. Have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? So I think um, having that partnership and having several different perspectives really helps. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really good too, especially like on the business aspect side is that she has her really good strengths in certain areas of the business yeah. and I do as well. So it's not like we over like, like we overstep each other. Um, so like, for example, she's really good with marketing and like just the aesthetics of everything. And that might not be my strong point. So mm -hmm. like, I think that where I lack, she like picks up and where yeah. she lacks, I pick up. And so sometimes you might get those friends who are who go in business and they might be really really good at the same thing so they're fighting or they're like trying to pull each other like tug of war because hey I want this but you want this too and I think for us luckily like thank god like we both have different assets and we bring different things yeah. to the table that well, are completely Jay say, different. whatever she like I ran over her shoulder there you go <laughs> <laughs> we also really understand each other as well like I feel like we since we have grown up together we've yeah. really gotten to know each other to our core mm -hmm in a sense and I, I can look at her and kind of know something's what she's thinking or, yeah. or you know like something's wrong mm -hmm. or she's not having a good day based off the way that she texts me her tone I can I know her tone of voice through text yeah. wow. so she knows me like the back of her hand yeah. it's crazy and you can you can just feel the energy mm -hmm. you know and that sisterhood is like so important in business mm -hmm. and even outside of business I tell women all the time you can have your man you know, you can have it all going on, but you need women. Like, yeah, you need that sure. sisterly love. You need people to be able to talk to. Yep. You need to talk to other women, mm -hmm. right? You need those shoulders. You know, you need those quiet yep. moments. Um, that that's just so important. Mm -hmm. Um, how how intentional have you all been with working with other women um, in this industry? Very intentional. So um, each month we have a flavor of the month and we do a lot of collabs with other small women owned businesses. Um, also one of our like slogans is called rolling with women owned businesses. So we really love to promote other women owned businesses as well. I love it. What about you? Um, I would piggyback off of um, what Malia said as well. Like we're really, really big on women empowerment um, and just in this space that we're in. Um, so we do try to cultivate and reach out and collab with other women in the community that look like us or are on the same journey um, and just wanted to spotlight both of us at the same time because there's room for everyone. Love it. So if someone was starting from scratch and they're like, you know, I want to go into business with my bestie. We are going to start <laughs> an ice cream truck what would you tell them from start to finish? I would say um, for both partners to know your strengths, know your weaknesses, know if that works together. And then I would say, don't take no for an answer. The sky's the limit. Keep trying and don't limit yourself. Mm -hmm. I would say that too. I would say also know yourself um, and know each other. And for us, it's a little different because we got 20 years in the game. So I don't know how, you know, if you're with your friend, if you've been friends for five years or not. But I think you'll know you'll have that intuition. You'll have that gut feeling of whether or not you should take or jump out on this entrepreneurial journey and have a business with your best friend. You know, you if you know, you know. And we also That's live together. And I feel like when you live with someone. Oh, so you married for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we just ain't got the We were roommates <laughs> freshman year of college. And so it was our first time living living together and it worked mm -hmm. yeah. so we felt like if we could live together that was an indication that we could also start a business together so talk to me about the process like the real process of building this thing from scratch just from the ice cream truck standpoint so you say we're going to start an ice cream truck do you go buy a brand new truck do you buy a new truck what does this all look like so I feel like we have to tell you the background story. Tell, tell us the background story. <laughs> the girl CEOs want to know. <laughs> so our junior year of college, we traveled to New York. Uh, we tasted rolled ice cream for the first time. It was trending on Instagram. We came back. There was no rolled ice cream in Tennessee. So Barry and I were like, we have to start this business. Like we have to start it. We have to be the first road ice cream. So let me jump in right there. That's okay. market research, mm -hmm. right? So you go and do your market research. Mm -hmm. You're like, let me see what's trendy. Mm -hmm. Let me see what's in demand. And let me see if anyone is doing it in my city. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, nope, we don't have any competitors here. It's popping. Mm -hmm. It's trendy. This is going to be our thing. Mm -hmm. All right. I love that. Let's go. At the time, 
we were in college. Okay. We had no money. We were trying to finish our degrees. Mm-hmm. So it just wasn't, it wasn't feasible. Mm-hmm. Fast forward, what, two, three two, years? Yeah. Uh, we would talk every day after, after work and we're like, uh, I don't feel satisfied. I don't want to do this. Like, what can we do to get out of this situation? So Barry was like, do you remember that time we went to, uh, we went to New York and we tried road ice cream for the first time? I was like, yeah. She was like, let's do it. My church was selling a truck, a bus, for $1,500 at the time. All right, so we have a $1,500 truck. $1,500 truck. Still deal. Still deal. <laughs> Still deal. Her brother said, if y'all are serious, I'll give you 1000 So all y'all have to do is come out of pocket 250 So you had one person mm-hmm. that believed in the vision mm-hmm. to a point where he was willing to invest mm-hmm. in the vision. And Girl CL's like, let's just make sure that we take note of this. Sometimes we're looking for 50 people to believe in us. Sometimes mm-hmm. we're looking for thousands of people on Instagram to believe in our vision. But this just goes to show that you just need one person just to one. put that money yeah. where their mouth is and show you that they really believe you. So bro came through. Bro came through. Bro came through. Rose <laughs> the check. He slid you that $1,000. Slid the check. Yeah. And where did it go from there? So we uh, we got the bus wrapped. Mm-hmm. We you what know, did that cost? That was what five k, I think. Mm-hmm. That was five k. Right, so how did y'all come up with the five k? How and did we come? Well, like, we, we were working. Yeah. So like uh, throughout this whole entire process, we were working on our corporate job. So we waking up at the crack of dawn, going into work, and knowing that this ain't what we want to do. You know, just trying to get a paycheck. And every time we get paid, we're dishing it. It to went straight. And we were also living with our parents yeah. at the time as well. All right, so. Girl CL, this is Girl CO game. Yeah. So let's get the Girl CO game in here. So the truck is a thousand dollars. Well, fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. Mm-hmm. We get Bro to slide the mm-hmm. one the the thousand dollars yep. to show that he's really invested. invested in the vision and dream. He believes in you, and yep. this is your brother. Yeah, it's my brother-in-law. Yep. All right, brother-in-law comes through to show mm-hmm. the support. Yep. So we get that money from him. Yep. And then we need five k to wrap. Mm-hmm. The bus. Mm-hmm. We keep our expenses low. Mm-hmm. Y'all better listen to this. <laughs> we stay home with our parents, mm-hmm. yep. which can be a very humbling experience mm-hmm. yes. to get that money up. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we use the income from our jobs. Mm-hmm. We don't go by the Gucci. No. We don't go by the Louis. No. I know y'all wanted that Chanel bag. <laughs> But you said no. We're gonna put this into spending five k mm-hmm. to get the outside of this bus wrap, mm-hmm. so we can get the visibility, mm-hmm. and we want to get the marketing. We want everyone to see you where this bus is going, and you use the income from both of your jobs. Do you all split that twenty five twenty five? Yeah, yeah. And you get the bus wrap. What about the inside of the bus? So I don't remember exactly how much the inside cost. I would I would say as a whole, we probably spent around like. 20 to 30k to get the food truck started so how did we come up with the 20 to 30 was it all income from the biz from the jobs so it was our jobs our parents Mm -hmm. my grandmother like everyone honestly was just pitching in yeah Yeah. Yeah. so did you have to pay these people back um yeah Yeah, we pay my yeah yeah, my grandmother back yeah Mm -hmm. okay so how much were y'all in with grandma uh, I think she may have gave us like 5k maybe mm-hmm. okay so mm-hmm. you pay your grandma mm-hmm. I love that you know sometimes <laughs> it takes a yeah, village she, she really believed in our vision like a she lot everybody like, did yeah. like our whole entire family like they were super 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 supportive um, and like like she said like we did pay some people back but there are some people that were just like hey like yeah. I want y'all to really succeed like yeah. here this is my investment how important is it to ask for help because sometimes ego can get in the way and we're like I'm not asking anybody for money like I don't want to be indebted to anyone like how important is it to step out and say hey you know do you believe in this enough to invest in it I think very important and I think at that time uh, we were honestly just telling people our vision and people were like oh well we really want y'all to do this so here here's this here's that Um, but asking for help is definitely essential and we're I feel like I'm learning that even more now now. it's, it's been a journey. It is a journey. Um, it's kind of challenging sometimes to ask for help. We like to do it on our own, mm-hmm. and you can't always do it on your own. Yeah. So. so we get the truck, finish the story. What happened after that? So after we got the truck up and going, um, we scheduled our first event. Our first event was on June 2nd. Mm-hmm. It was June 2nd or June 3rd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, June 2nd. Um, we sold out. Mm-hmm. So we were like, oh, okay. Our our ice cream must be a little good. <laughs> like we sold out of everything. So from there, the rest is history. And, and you were like, 
It's time. Yeah. Yep. And then you, that was June the 2nd. And when mm -hmm. did you all quit? So we quit in March of the following, okay. of the following year. So we yeah. did So it we were just doing it on the weekends. Yeah, we were yeah. doing just part-time for like, what, nine months? Yeah, so yeah. let's talk about that because normally as soon as you see that that money coming in, everyone's like, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. What made you say that I'm going to not only just stay in this, but I'm going to stay in this for almost a year afterwards, even though the income is coming in and still get the income from the job and the business. Why was that important to both of you all? Um, I think for me, like it was also like a cushion. Um, so it was very new to me. Um, like I said, I she's more of a risk taker in my sense than I think I am sometimes. I think I'm more of a risk taker now. Um, but back then, almost five years ago, I was a little hesitant um, just because I just graduated college. You know, this wasn't like the track or anything like that. Um, so I just wanted to have a cushion more than anything. Um, I've always wanted to be pretty financially like stable um, yeah. on my own um, and also just being a woman and so I just never wanted to have to really rely on anyone so I know for me like I wanted to like push that out as long as I possibly could um, but also just trying to get the kinks out as well I mean we were fret we were new um, to the food truck industry we were new to this whole entire entrepreneurial journey um, and you just never know what happens so just being able to have that security net to fall back on yeah. and just wanted to make sure that we actually wanted to do this mm -hmm. as well oh wow so like i said i wanted to go to dental school so this so you was, were still leaning on your i was your still trying career. to get into dental yeah. school this was supposed to be my um what is it called like an off year okay and so i was just working in my off year trying mm -hmm. to get into dental school and i was just growing a love and passion for road forever for entrepreneurship mm -hmm. so I was like, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. I want to take a leap and see where this actually goes. Yeah, you know, the word that really stood out to me was the cushion. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so important for as girl CEOs to make sure we have that cushion when it comes to starting these businesses. Because sometimes mm -hmm. you may be in an up season in your business. Yep. Yeah. But the thing about business is you have up seasons, yeah, yeah. you have down seasons, mm -hmm. you have seasons where you have to reinvent yourself, reinvent mm -hmm. your business and you have to come back stronger. What has been one of the hardest things that you all have faced since you've had this business together? I would say, um, so we opened a second store. Okay. Mm -hmm. And- Talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> let them know. You know, let them know the real. So when we started the food truck, we were majority in Rutherford County. So Rutherford County is like 30 minutes outside of Nashville. So, we were doing all of our events there and we were very, very popular. We would sell out almost every time we would set up somewhere. So when we started the, the search for the store, we were either gonna do Nashville or somewhere in Rutherford County. Mm -hmm. We decided to go with Nashville. So we said our second location would be in Smyrna where we thrived with the food truck. Mm -hmm. It was a little different. I think that we used the market research for the truck to compare it to a store and it's different and it's so different mm -hmm. um and i don't think we were ready for a second store at the time mm -hmm. so adding a second store it was like a storm honestly mm -hmm. it was so heavy on us um we were exhausted we were tired we we really had nothing left to give yeah and what happened did you all keep the store did you close no, it? we closed, closed it, it. Yep. yeah and it was so freeing when we closed it wow yeah. let's which talk is, about that <laughs> which it is crazy so yeah. because people were very sad that we closed the store but i think me and bear we had this talk and we were like if we want to continue road forever if we want to continue to give our all to this business we have to let this go yeah mm -hmm. and, I, and i love that you share that you two were open enough to share that here on this show because there are so many entrepreneurs and girl CEOs out here that are mm -hmm. going through hard times in their businesses that are going to have to shut a business down. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I want you all to stress how it didn't break you, but mm -hmm. it built you after making that decision. Mm -hmm. It made everything so much clearer. Yeah, and I think people have to also, you know, we get so caught up in like the image and what others think and like our supporters and different things like that. But you gotta understand that the business doesn't operate without you. Um, so if you don't have yourself, um, then 
nobody has what you have to offer. Um, so I think that you just got to be really true to yourself. Um, and sometimes you have to close down a store. Sometimes you got to close down a segment of your business. And that's okay um, because nobody is walking your journey. Nobody's going through what you're going through. Um, so I think you just got to stay true to yourself and not do it for the outside, like, sources yeah. in a sense. You the gotta, glorification. Yeah, yeah, you got to really do it for you at the end of the day because you're the one going home with this burden. You're the one who's getting stretched thin. You know, they're not the ones who are with you when you're crying at night because you're like, I don't know what I need to do and I don't know the next move. So just be true to yourself. Um, and it was really hard for us because I thought, you know, that that's our hometown. That's where we grew up. You know, our high right. school is like less than five minutes away from the location. We opened. So we just assumed that like we would have a lot of support. We like over, overflowing. Um, and it was just complete opposite. So do you believe in the saying that that strangers support you more than the people you actually know? I think I think so. Wow. To an extent, I definitely think that a lot of people that we do know do support us. So I don't want to negate the fact of that because I think we do have a lot of supporters that are close to us. Yeah. Um, but I do think a lot of strangers do support you a lot more than the yeah. people who are close to you. Because to open up a business in your hometown, mm -hmm. you know, five minutes from where you went to school at and mm -hmm. thinking like this is going to be crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to get this crazy pouring of people. And then it's like it doesn't do as good as you expected. Yeah. And then you end up closing that location mm -hmm. down. It could be kind of like a gut punch, right? Yeah. And then you come to a city where you're not even from this city, you open up something and it just blows up. Yeah. You know, it goes crazy. Uh, it's just kind of like, wow. Closing a store publicly can be one of those things you feel in your stomach, you know? And, and so many of us, we have to stay focused on the bigger vision, right? Because so sometimes the goal can be for the social media love or to show people that like, I can do this, but once you get past that, you realize that you have to make decisions that are best for you and your business financially. Mm -hmm. You know, you see people continue to run businesses and dump money into things that are not giving them that return on investment. Yeah. You know, how relieved did you feel once you decided that, okay, you know what, we're going to close the second store because it just isn't working and we're going to focus on the one that is working. Very relieved. Like, I... I felt like our vision was much clearer. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, like our processes, our systems, we went back to the drawing board, we reevaluated them, and I feel like now we're running much more smoothly than we were before. Yeah. Um, and everything has worked thus far in our business. The Smyrna store was the first thing that didn't work. Yeah. So now we're, I think that we're thinking more business minded instead of creative minded. So we're just, on the right path. Yeah, sometimes like. there's more left in your business, mm -hmm. right? And there's more room to monetize what you already have. Yeah. Right? And then you realize, like, let me go back to what I already have and let me amplify this. Okay. And yeah. that's just what I see you all doing right now. Yep. Yeah. So what would you say, you know, to people who are watching this interview, they're in their 20s, they have a dream, they have a vision, they have a goal, and they're super scared? I say, again, stay true to yourself. Um, me and Malia actually were having a conversation yesterday, I believe it was, um, and we were talking about how you know, we get into being this entrepreneur and it's like we have all these ideas and you're a visionary and you're creative and you're just like, so many things are coming on your plate and you're just like, oh, I wanna do this. I know we can execute it, so let's do it. Um, but ultimately, sometimes you have to take a step back and like literally just look at the full picture um, because everything that comes to you doesn't need to get a yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that come like to that. you, you need to just say no. That's not on my That's not on my plan. That's not, that's not in the works right now. So I just need to put that on the back burner for now and then we we might can you know double back and come back to it and I think um, going into the Smyrna location we were just so excited that like you know we were getting off the ground running you know two young entrepreneurs like this wasn't even our dream we didn't even think that this was even possible for yeah. us you know yeah. what I mean and so everything that came to us we felt like we had to say yes mm -hmm. because we wanted to be able to execute and succeed in everything yeah um, and that's not always you know that's not always the best the best way to go so sometimes you got to just step back again and realign, refocus, and just say, like, hey, I'm on this journey, and if, you know, X, Y, and Z comes my way, I might have to say no to X, Y, and Z right now. doesn't mean that I can't do it or I don't think I can do it. It's just not the time. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Own lane, own race, own pace. That's yep. what we say. Bar. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> bar. bar. We have to stay in our own lane, <laughs> yep. and we have to, you know, 
at times when we get off of that track, we have to realign ourselves and say, you know, does this align with our purpose? Mm -hmm. Does this align with our passion? Is this something that we want to do? And if it doesn't, even if it's shiny, even if it's gold, then it's a no. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're becoming more comfortable with saying Mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. It was very hard Hard at first. Those no's are free your life up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, can you come in? No. Yeah. Yep. What's your next weekend? You, you want to go to this for us? No. Yep. Those, those will definitely free <laughs> definitely your life up. So yeah. where can everyone find you all? Um, so we have a storefront in Germantown, um, Nashville. It's 1120 4th Avenue North. Um, and then we have a food truck and we're all around Middle Tennessee. So you can just check our social medias. So our social media is at Rolled, R-O-L-L-E-D, the number four ever e-v-e-r ice cream and then my personal instagram is oh, personal <laughs> the personal queen dot mb <laughs> and then uh, my personal instagram is miss m-i-s-s underscore barry b-a-r-i yeah and and we're this is gonna get a little exciting because we're about to make some ice cream yeah, yeah let's do it we finna are roll. you good with your you good with your hands you, you got it <laughs> okay let's do it we rolling okay. I'm ready. let's get to rolling this All is right. gonna be my first time doing roll ice cream was yesterday your first time having rolled no. ice cream okay no okay. this is my first time having it but i really love it okay uh-huh. let's do it okay let's go <laughs> All right, y'all, so they got me up in the kitchen. I'm about to make the monster my attack. first road ice, ice cream. Um, which, which one are we making today? So this is the monster attack. It's our cookies and cream Oreo ice cream. It's our number one seller. Oh, this is my favorite one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I am 100% a cookies and cream girl. Okay. All right, so what do I do first? So this is the vanilla base. Okay. So you're gonna take the base, you're gonna pour it on the plate. Do I pour any kind of way? Yep. Yeah, you can just pour it. Okay. Okay. All right, you can just give me this. All right, I'll so get that I poured it there. So now you're gonna, this is where you're gonna scrape like an upward motion. Okay. Okay. All right. There you go. Oh, okay. it, it got a little. Yeah, yeah it changes it's gonna get a little hard. I can work here. Like, <laughs> don't say that now. We <laughs> we Y'all already asked me to be on the board. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So how? So is there like a freezer underneath the here that's like making it cold? So it's an electric plate. Um, so it's cooling constantly. Okay. Um, and it's set to negative fifteen degrees. Yeah. So you can actually chop the Oreo. Oh, okay. So I can chop it up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is the splashing part of the coming. Yeah. All right, let me protect my white sweatshirt. <laughs> Don't there you go. Her. You're okay. like you're doing really good. Yep. So go on and get around them edges. Mm-hmm. Okay. There we go. Okay. There we go. So and then chop, chop a little bit. Mm-hmm. Don't play with her. She is not one of them. <laughs> she is not one of them. All right. So now you're going to move the ice cream over to the left side of the tray. Um, over here? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because well, we're going to get ready to spread. Plate, yeah. I want all my ice cream. Yeah, we need all of it. No, 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 no. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, now. <laughs> so now you're going to paint. So you're going to spread the ice cream out, yeah? Make it very thin. Okay. And you want to put very, pressure. Make it very thin. Uh-huh. Okay. There you go. You're going to try to make it into a square. Yeah. Oh, in a square? Mm-hmm. If you can. There you go. Our class was my best class. Was it really? <laughs> no, I'm capping. Okay. So you can keep spreading it because it's going to get hard. Okay. And spread it out along All the plate. Way, like, yeah. try to come over here with it. There okay. you go. There you go. Okay, so. <laughs> So a lot of the ice cream, you can put it on that side to like make it. So now you see how you have ice cream on this side. Okay, come right here and then spread that way to the left. Of this ice cream? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. And then I'm gonna just help you out a little bit. (laughs) Oh, I see what you're saying. Like 
Move there you go. Over. And yeah. then and I'll then spread that over the other side. There you go. Okay. Okay, teamwork. There okay, we go. Teamwork makes the dream work. Got to. Okay. So we're just going to make it real thin because it's still real a little. Real thin because it's a little thin. Mm -hmm. Real thin. Got this little There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're getting somewhere now. Rolling this ice cream. Can't write your name in the chocolate. Oh. Oh. All right, so now I'm going to write my name in the chocolate <laughs> drizzle. I'm going to put Big Ronnie. Okay. Okay, Big Ronnie. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. <laughs> Beast and for bands. <laughs> All right, All so right. start on this side. Okay. And then, so, so you're gonna. So hold it with both hands, like both this. Both hands? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then just push upward. Okay. You can just do one cohesive push, just keep pushing. There you go. There you go. Is it hard? Mm, it's, it's all right. It's all right. Okay. I think I can do it. There this. we go. <laughs> And this time, just try to go all the way, like just just push all the way through. Just like uh, there I you go. Yep. It makes it a little more smoother. Yeah, it makes, it, it makes a smoother transition. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, you gonna have muscles working here? Like three months of this, and you be cut up. <laughs> There we go. Have some rolls here. There we go. Okay. I want all mine. All the ice cream. All of it. Okay, bam. So here's your cup. So what do I do now? You can put the spatula back in here. Okay. And then you'll just grab this with the, the roll. And then just put them in the cup. Put around the perimeter of the cup. Oh, there you go. Okay. There you go. Have you watched a lot of road ice cream videos? No, this really? is my first time. There we go. Okay. Cooked it real nice. You gotta show the people your road. All right, y'all. <laughs> my first roll ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited about this. So do we go with So oh, we'll, we can bring, we'll bring the whipped cream over here. Okay. So then you just put the whipped cream in the singer. Shake that. it over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can be a little, I want to shake, shake, shake. Yeah. There we go. And this one is called the, the monster, monster attack. attack. The monster attack. This is my favorite one. Mm -hmm. And then we top it off with some drizzle. chocolate drizzle. Ooh. Ooh. I'm going to do a little bit of this because I'm trying to stay snatched. <laughs> there you go. And there we have it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna taste it. Let y'all know what it's hitting on. <laughs> it's giving everything it's supposed to give. Okay, mm -hmm. so delicious. All right, so how the hell do you stay skinny? <laughs> we work out <laughs> every day. Gotta work out. Yeah. Oh my god, it's Try so to. good. It's so good, y'all. Yeah. Thank y'all for teaching me how to roll some ice cream. Most definitely. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. All right, y'all. Let's try ice cream this one's going. <laughs> Let's do a cheers. Y'all got it. Y'all want cheers, honey? Who are we going to cheers Who are we going to cheers with? Here you go. <laughs> to roll ice cream. To roll, to ice, roll cream. ice cream. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> It's the girl CEO show. Run it up. Always on the grind. You already know what's up.